So the lighting in this kitchen has been a problem ever since I got the cabin. It's very, very difficult to see with just these lantern lights in here, these propane lights. So much so that a lot of the times I end up doing dishes and cooking with my headlamp on so I can actually see what I'm doing. But today I'm going to fix that because I'm going to install some electric lights here above the kitchen sink above the bar over there and the dining table. So I'm very excited that this right here is my last set of dishes in these dark conditions. Now going forward after today, I will have the option to flip a switch and have excellent lighting as opposed to this being my only option. So I'm gonna finish up these dishes and we'll get it going here. See, I feel a dirty spot, but I can't see it. Did I get it or not? Yep. I think I got it, but I can't be sure. <laughs> so I stopped by one of my favorite stores in the world, Grover's. Uh, it's a local plumbing, electrical, kind of all things DIY store. And they have some real experts there that help me out a lot on a lot of the projects that I do. So places like that are hard to find and they are a gem. So I really appreciate the crew there. And they hooked me up with what will hopefully be everything that I need. Now, before all you electricians get on my case about this, why didn't you just get a pipe bender and bend all of your conduit? Well, I did the math. It actually made more financial sense for me to purchase these individual 90s and these coupler pieces because of how many 90s I needed and the cost of the pipe bender itself because I'm not gonna be doing, uh, I don't plan on doing a whole lot more of this style conduit and they don't rent pipe benders. I was hoping that was the case. If they rented the pipe bending tool, I would've just used that or I would've just rented it. But so I spent as much money on these 90s and these couplers as it would have cost me to purchase the pipe bender, which I'm probably only gonna use one time. So that was my logic behind getting all of these. And honestly, I kind of like the look of this anyways with these coupler fittings. And I was afraid my pipe bending wasn't really gonna be looking that great. And these are very precise. So all that said, I should hopefully have all the pieces that I need. Okay, this makes sense to me. That's all I needed to confirm before I start screwing things to the ceiling. Just gonna use this method to take off the sharpness off the end so I don't cut myself or lower the chances of me cutting myself. Nice and tight. Yeah.
So this big chunk of wood with this nice live edge on it was right here behind the wood stove pipe. But I took it out because the pipe was so close to that, I didn't like that. So I was trying to think of a way that I could use this. And it turns out it's long enough to go between these right here. And this is what I'll mount the light that's gonna go above the dining room table to right here. So that'll be pretty cool. Well, it took me all day, but I got the conduit run here from outside to inside. And I've got all of my boxes and everything in place. Over here too in the dining room area, I had to put together these lights to make sure I put the box and everything in the right place. So tomorrow I will finish wiring everything up. And I'm gonna say this multiple times, I am not an electrician, just a, your average uh, DIY or jack of many trades, master of none, so. All right guys, so it's the next day and I'm here under the cabin and here is the wire that goes to the generator. And on the other end, it goes to this box. Those of you who saw me wire this room over here know that this is the junction box for the outlets and the lights of that room. And here's that piece of conduit coming down that I just drilled the hole for. So I'm going to run a wire through that piece of conduit over into this box and I'm gonna connect into that and that will power my lights in the kitchen. <laughs> Ooh, 
man that was a lot more work than i anticipated so there is a lot going on in this box there's four wires total three coming in from this side and one over here and it was more work because i was thinking there was only going to be three wire nuts here one for the ground one for the white one for the black but these wire nuts that i have they're not meant to hold four 12 gauge wires so i had to add a little piece kind of as a coupler and that's all the more i'm going to explain about that because those of you who understand will get it and then those of you who don't uh well again i'm not an electrician so let's move on so basically all the connections have been made here at this box and now if i turn on the generator there will be power to everything that i just wired in the kitchen so i can't turn on the generator yet because i haven't finished so let's go up and finish everything in the kitchen and then this part will be ready so since i can't turn on the generator right now to use the lights in this room i'm limited on lighting to finish this wiring so i'm going to use my battery here and this light but i want to explain my thought process a little bit when it comes to this electricity so again i just put in this wire which goes down underneath the cabin to that box and then out to the generator. So once I crank up the generator and when I push in that plug, that sends electricity through to this wire right here. And then once I connect this wire to this wire, the electricity is going to flow to the next point, which is this end of the wire right here. And when I connect this wire to this wire, the electricity will continue to flow. So the way I make sense of this electricity situation is it works like water. You have valves throughout your house and there's a water source. Most people, like if you have city water where you live, the water comes from the city and then it comes to your street and there's a valve outside your house and you have to turn on that valve and once it's turned on, the water flows to your house. And then there's a shutoff underneath your house and you turn that on and the water starts to flow to your kitchen sink. And there's a valve right here at your kitchen sink. And once you turn that on, then the water starts to flow out of your faucet. So electricity works the same way. That's the way I think about it. So when I was planning all this out, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking generator, plug, wire to that plug goes to the box under the cabin. From that box, I connect one wire to another wire and on down the line. And then it gets a little bit more complex when you add in, okay, what lights do I need to power and what switch is gonna power which light? So the reason I put an outlet here and a switch right here is because first I need that electricity flow that I was talking about coming from the generator. It needs to go somewhere first. So it's gonna go to this outlet. So I put the outlet here partially because that's where the power needs to flow, but also this is the countertop bar here and it's nice to have a plug in if you wanna plug in a blender or something like that or a coffee maker, or whatever. So it's nice to have an outlet and this is going to be the source of all the power from this point. So the power goes into this outlet and then I'm gonna run a wire from this outlet to this switch. Now this switch is like the shutoff of that kitchen faucet over there. When it's off, the electricity stops flowing. When I turn it on, the electricity starts to flow to the next location in the line of wires that I installed. So the power is going to start here at the outlet, go to the switch, and then the switch is going to control whether what goes next is on or off. That switch is going to connect to this wire right here, which goes to that light above the sink over there. And then next I'm gonna go from this outlet right here into this box. And this box is gonna have these two switches because there's two more lights. And that's what these two wires are for, those two lights. One of them is this one right here, which goes to these lights that are gonna be above the bar here. And then this switch right here is going to control this wire which goes over to the dining room lights right here. And this wire is gonna connect to all those wires that control those lights. 
Now I'll speed through the wiring process, the black, white, and ground. It's just kind of tedious. Like you can, if you really want to know how to do this, you can look up videos showing exactly how to wire an outlet, wire a switch. I'm not really going to get into that, but I did want to give a little bit of explanation just so like it's not super rocket science. It's just, it's literally the flow of electricity is like the, the flow of water. Another thing I feel I need to acknowledge about electricity is that I know about circuit breakers and circuit boxes. I don't fully understand them. Like, <laughs> so when I built my tiny house that had a circuit box and I had help from my stepdad who knows much more about electricity than I do, but I do understand the concept of separating rooms in your house or your building or whatever you're wiring. So you have all of the outlets and the lights, let's say in your bathroom, all those wires connect to one point which go into your box, which has a breaker for the bathroom. That's why in your house, you'll see like the labels on the breakers that say bathroom, kitchen, master bedroom, living room. That's because the outlets and the lights are separated uh, amongst the rooms and you'll have like a 15 amp breaker in your bathroom and a 20 amp breaker in your laundry room because the washer and dryer in the laundry room takes more electricity than you would use in the bathroom. Or these are just examples. So I understand that concept here at the cabin. I don't have a breaker box. The way that this is working is everything runs to the same plug out there. So I understand that this system can get overloaded if you're not careful. Now, it's usually just me up here. And even when there is multiple people, like 4th of July weekend's coming up, there's gonna be a lot of people here. I have to let people know when we have the generator running, there can't be someone in the bathroom that wants to use their hair dryer and then someone upstairs watching TV and then at the same time someone's charging their laptop and then someone else is in the bedroom doing something else. Like you can't, or like running a vacuum cleaner, like all these things can't happen simultaneously because it will be too much for the generator. It's, it's too much for one system. for literally all of these plugs throughout the cabin they're all going to the generator so it's you know it's not to code <laughs> uh, but i understand that so people who are watching this are like this guy does it. it's true i don't know what i'm talking about but i kind of know what i'm talking about if you know what i'm talking about you know you know what i mean I did it. I did it. Wow, that's really bright. When they're all turned up all the way simultaneously, that is really bright. It's actually too bright. That's crazy. I think middle of the road with all of them is a good balance. This is awesome, dude. Well, I can now say with confidence, this glass container is clean. It has no missed spots. And I don't have to squint to say whether or not that's the truth. Because I can see it thanks to these new electric lights. Now, don't get me wrong. This kitchen and this cabin was just fine before I installed these lights. Yes, those propane lights are a lot less bright but they got the job done and I could still wash my dishes with those lights. And I'm grateful for those and I'm grateful for everything else about this cabin because it's a lot more than a lot of other people have. So I am grateful. Now with that being said, I do believe it was worth the time and the effort and the expense to invest my time and money and effort into a project like this. And that's the case for everything that I'm doing up here at this cabin because you never know what life holds. I hope that this cabin stays in my possession for the rest of my life. That's 
that's what I would like to have happen, but you never know. So I'm trying to do things that add value to me, in my opinion, add value to this place for myself, for the people who could inhabit this in the future, whether that be me or in my family or somebody else in their family. And if it is me, the value is going to be watching other people, including myself, <laughs> enjoy the fruits of all of this labor that I'm putting in. And if it happens to be somebody else, well, the value is going to be the more money that they spent on buying this cabin than I did because they're buying a cabin that's in a much better condition than when I bought it. So either way, I slice it. Any possible outcome I see for this cabin, I am uh, adding value. And uh, as long as I'm doing that, and in the process I'm adding value for me personally because I'm learning how to do a lot of these things along the way and even the things I'm not learning I am gaining experience and I'm challenging my mind and I'm challenging myself and based on some of the feedback that I've gotten from people who have watched my videos it's adding out it's adding value to other people's lives which is hey just an added bonus so as always I really appreciate you guys watching my video and I encourage you to challenge yourself and uh, try and do things that add value to your life, whatever that may mean for you. So uh, thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one.